Hey gang, Chuck Berry's opening riff to Johnny B. Good is one of the most famous, earliest, and best in all of rock and roll. It influenced players like Clapton, Page, Keith Richards, Eddie Van Halen, and countless other guitar heroes. But did Chuck get it from somebody else? We all know and love Chuck Berry's guitar playing, and what could be more Chuck Berry than Johnny B. Good? I mean, everybody knows that Chuck Berry style of rhythm, right? And of course, we all know those classic Chuck Berry lead lines. It was certainly one of the first cool licks that I ever learned, and every good rock player knows them and modifies them. You know, like Clapton did on Crossroads. One person even told me that he thinks that Chuck Berry should get paid anytime anybody plays anything like that lick. Well, I'm not sure about that, but the question really is, where did Chuck get it from? Did he take it from somebody else himself? Actually, Carl Hogan played guitar on a song called Ain't That Just Like a Woman by Louis Jordan in 1946. And believe it or not, the opening lick went like this. Sound familiar? Carl Hogan played that with Louis Jordan and his Timpani 5, perhaps the greatest jump blues act of all time. By the way, there's a killer solo in it as well, and I did a lesson on it a while back. I put the link in the description. If you like jump blues, you're going to want to check that out for sure. So, okay, Chuck definitely got the Johnny B. Good opening lick from that song. The notes are almost exactly the same. The question is, did he steal it? Let's have a deeper look. First, Chuck acknowledged the influence that he got. So let's give him credit for doing that. In an article in 2017, he said, The main guy was Louis Jordan. I wanted to sing like Nat King Cole, with lyrics like Louis Jordan, with the swing of Benny Goodman, with Charlie Christian on guitar playing Carl Hogan's riffs, with the soul of Muddy Waters. A rock star acknowledging those who influenced him? Yeah, he gets a little credit in my book for that one. Second, he didn't just play the lick verbatim. He changed it in pretty significant ways. It's a lot of the same notes, but in my opinion, it's not the same lick. He changed the rhythm. In Ain't That Just Like a Woman, the lick swings, but Chuck played it in straight eights. This might not seem that significant, but actually it's an absolute key to the movement of popular music from the shuffle rhythms of jazz and blues to the straight eight rhythms of rock and roll that were going to all happen in the 60s. Here's how Carl Hogan played it. I'm going to transpose it to B flat so we can make an easy comparison. Let's check this out. Now here's what Chuck did. As I said, that may not seem like such a huge deal, but you've got to remember, he was playing with all blues musicians. They were swinging while he was playing straight eights, and that gave the music a tension, which gave it a little bit of extra dynamism, if you will, and also allowed him to play with a little bit of a laid-back feel, even though the music is at quite a high tempo. He added attack. The original is great, I love it, but you got to admit, Chuck added a lot more aggressiveness and punch into it. One of the ways he did that was by doing all downstrokes, or almost all downstrokes. Maybe almost in a way that Charlie Christian used to do it, because he needed volume to be able to compete with the horns and stuff like that. Check it out.
he added volume and thickness. Chuck didn't have the luxury of having the amps and pedals and overdrive that we have today, so it was easy for him to get lost in the mix in the competition with the other instruments. One way he got around that was not only to play aggressively, but to add double stops to make a much thicker sound. Now, I don't know how you feel, but I think the lick was totally transformed. He used his own influences, plus some of his own ideas, and made a totally different lick. So I think it was influenced, but not stolen. I think Chuck deserves all the credit that he gets, and probably more for being one of the top guitar players of all time in rock and roll. Hey, if you like this one, I bet you'll like this video as well. Why don't you check it out, and we'll see you on down the road.